All right, um, welcome back everybody. It is now 325 and we are going to start our next roundtable discussion on uh, teaching online or in hybrid classes. Um, this is mostly university. I think I think everybody presenting today is, is university. So um, if you're teaching at the university level or what really at any level, but um, and you're teaching online, this is this discussion is for you for you to contribute and add some ideas. Um, but yeah, we are going to hear from four great presenters, Ivan, uh, Ravasi, Jason Pipe and Gary. Uh, we've got lots of Jasons today. So Jason Pipe and Gary, um, if you guys could introduce yourselves briefly and the specific context that you teach, that would be fantastic. Oh, certainly. Um, hi, everybody. Yes, um, my name is Jason. Um, what can I tell you about myself? Um, as with everybody else, um, I'm a seasoned teacher. I've taught from elementary to university level. Um, I'm a qualified teacher back in the UK. I also teach students who want to go into pre-master's courses at Edinburgh University. So I've got um, a varied experience and um, my research I'm really particularly interested in, in um, telling you about is about pronunciation. Um, I mentioned to a few um, few teachers earlier on that um, one thing I found which is troublesome is the fact that students don't seem to be able to interact well and one issue is how they can pronounce um, and express themselves clearly and um, to native speakers and so I've been doing a lot of research and making a vast amount of materials on that um, and that's about it really. <laughs> is that my presentation done? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jason. We'll hear from um, Ivan. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Ivan. You can call me Ivan. Ivan. Uh, I'm learning to respond to every possible pronunciation of my name, okay. especially since moving to Japan. No, it's fine. All, all my colleagues call me Ivan. So I, it took me a couple of months to get used to it, but now I'm totally fine with that. Uh, I come from Italy. And before moving to Japan, I taught at the university level in Italy first and then the UK. And then I moved to Japan seven years ago. I've been, uh, I teach, I currently teach at, at, um, at a national university. That, and this will be functional to what I will be talking about. And of, of course, I've, uh, I teach too many things, too many things maybe. Uh, but also, I'm also speaking some, some teaching some speaking, English speaking courses. And I've been teaching in a sort of blended format uh, since 2016, I think. And of course, fully online from 2020. So this is what I will be talking about today. Thank you very much. And I know um, Ravasi already introduced herself at the very, very beginning. But uh, I would like her to introduce herself again, um, just to remind people who you are and um, and that you will be presenting in this in this session. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is uh, eleven forty-five here in India. Uh, to talk about myself, I uh, worked in tertiary level classroom. I uh, I was teaching um, ESL and EFL students for nearly 26 years and recently I retired as professor and head and now I'm currently um, working as uh, a freelance cons consultant and the teacher trainer. Now I conduct online uh, classes for teachers, uh, I should say online training for teachers uh, through Moodle and uh, whatever I have attempted uh, with my uh, students in the classroom and whatever I have uh, trained uh, uh, my teachers and what they have attempted in their uh, classroom is what I'm planning to present here today. I visited uh, Japan in 2010 uh, as a, uh, a participant, as a, a presenter in World Call. I represented India uh, and uh, I had the opportunity to uh, visit the country and see places and I loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then finally, I'm um, from Barry. Hi, uh, I'm Barry. Uh, I've uh, 2000 and what is this? 21 uh, is now my 30th year in Japan. Uh, I started my first two years at a uh, private English conversation schools, first in Tokyo and then in Hirosaki. 
Um, I moved to the Kosen system, which is a technical college system for three years. And uh, after that, I've been at the university, Hachinohe University. Actually, now it's Hachinohe Gakuin University um, for 24 years, I guess, um, with a two year kind of break in between to do yoga and massage and all that fun stuff, which I still do. Um, uh, I will be, I teach first years through fourth years at the university. Um, I have communication classes and I have just fundamental English classes, first year English classes. And um, even though the topic today was speaking in the new norm, I actually decided to focus not on the communication classes, but on the fundamental English first year, 60 student per class kind of uh, challenge, challenge class that I, that I have. And that uh, Greg, I don't know if he's online yet or not. He's my uh, coworker. And I have been kind of uh, uh, improving for the past three years, I think, um, and tweaking as, as we've been going on. Um, so that's it. I'm done. Awesome. Thank you, Barry. And Greg is here. He made oh, he is. Own. Okay. <laughs> yes. All, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So to start this off, um. Do you want to start, Ivan? Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Rachel. So, okay. I'll, I'll just begin by giving a general context of. Uh, what I'm doing and where I'm doing it, and because this is uh, kind of functional to uh, talking on uh, talking about what uh, I will explain today, and I will also explain how I reinvented the wheel three times for for these specific courses that I'm uh, that I'm teaching, and also maybe talking about something the changes between face to face and online, which is something that uh, we touched upon. Uh, this morning, uh, this morning, uh, early this, this afternoon. So yeah, let's let's begin. So I work at a national university, and I work in a course of study called, like in, in a faculty called the School of Global and Community Studies. Basically, what is important to what is relevant here is that the students who who enter this course have a first year that I have like, they have, I think four or possibly five intensive English courses that are compulsory and they, they are functional for them to be able to study abroad in their second or third year. So I teach some of these courses. I teach one in the, in the spring of the first year. I teach one in the fall of the first year. And, and I also teach a public speaking course that I'll get to, that I'll get to later. So, um, I've been teaching one of these courses, uh, four, four, two of these courses for four years. One is new, so it was created to be, to be taught online for the first time. But the first uh, course that I want to talk about is uh, the one that I teach in the, in the spring of the first year. So these are first year students, it's basically their they're just they just come to the university and this is possibly uh, in the schedule even the first course they take it's it's called basic english communication it's an english communication course um, students talk about themselves they usually work in pairs um, we have placement at the beginning of the semester and i usually teach the highest level section so you can expect uh, a low B1, full B1 or low B1 level, just for your reference. And normally the class size is between 20 to 24 students. We try to limit the class size. And yeah, students focus on just getting used to speaking in English. Uh, we do focus on pronunciation and fluency training a little bit, but mainly it's, it's a warm up. It's, it's potentially uh, their first like fully, full-fledged communication course ever. Um, what happened in 2020? As we were getting ready to start, the pandemic hit us. So 
it took we had like one month to prepare and make changes so i had one month to take everything that i had learned in the four years teaching this course and switching it online to some extent so i did have something to work on okay i i i changed many things but uh, I could take at least the structure and the main goals of that course and just transfer them online to some extent. The second uh, course that, um, that I've started to teach in 2020, it's a new course and this is taught in the fall, is, is called Advanced English Communication. As, as you can guess, it's like a continuation of the basic communication course. And this I had to um, make up from scratch because it wasn't offered before. And due to, to a change in, uh, in the university curriculum, this was this was the first year, so I I I was able to plan this course from scratch with the idea that this was going to be taught online. In the same semester, I also teach a public speaking course, which uh, instead like um, is my only elective course that I teach. So the students can choose whether to take this course or not. Uh, it has been in the past, possibly my most popular course uh, to the extent of having to uh, teach two sections, so break it down into two sections to, to avoid overcrowding uh, this course that just, you know, capping the number of students. And this course was supposed to be taught face-to-face -face in the fall because here in Fukui, the number, the, the number with the coronavirus were never so bad. So we, we thought we were good to go with face-to-face. Uh, -face. So I planned the course in order to be taught face-to-face. -face. However, 10 days before the beginning of the semester, I got news that the course um, will have to be taught online instead, since some of the stu some students who registered for the course uh, never actually came to, to Fukui, never moved to Fukui in the first place. So they were mm, ready to take the course online. And also two, uh, two students were not uh, physically in Japan. So um, that, that was something that nobody told me before. So I had to switch everything all of a sudden from my usual face-to-face -face context to an online context. So just to wrap up, with the, first, with the first course that, that I talked about, um, basic English communication, I could you know, save something that I, I have done in the past and just take it, try to transform it, try to adapt it to uh, teaching online with Google Classroom and Google Meet. These uh, are the two tools that I've used the most. Uh, in one case, uh, with the advanced English communication, I could plan a course from scratch with the digital tools that I had the chance to experiment with in the, um, in the previous semester. And with public speaking, because they told me literally 10 days before the beginning of the course, I didn't have time to rethink this course, to replan this course. So I took what I wanted to do in person and just transferred it online as it is, as it was. Um, I don't think it's any surprise that the course that I planned from scratch was the one that got the best uh, evaluations and also that felt better, that felt the smoothest to teach. While the one, the first one, of course it was the first one, there was a learning curve for myself, for the students. Uh, I had used um, like a blended teaching before. I used to use Schoology instead of Google Classroom, but basically, my students know, new, these are freshman students, but my, my older students know that half of what they do, homework and other assignments, they're all online. And they used to be like that before, way before the pandemic, but transferring everything online, including uh, the communication activities, you know, that didn't come without uh, a challenge. And then with the third course with public speaking, then I just had to uh, roll with what I had, so. Again, no surprise, it wasn't the best. It definitely wasn't the smoothest. So um, I thought that maybe here I would just share with you what worked. And then if there's uh, any question that I can integrate into my talk, I will, uh, I will do so. 
Um, one thing that I noticed that really helped from the get-go is to get students used to having a class routine. So before, even when teaching this basic English communication course, I used to have a textbook and then just go with the textbook. Let's say this week we focus on unit one, so we will do all the exercises, speaking activities, whatever, um, like in unit one of this textbook in order. So there was no clear class routine except a couple of rules that I usually give students. Uh, one, one rule that I always give that I set for my students is that in the 90, minute, 90 minutes of class time, students must talk for 70 or more minutes. So that is you know, speaking time. I shouldn't be talking for more than five to 10 minutes unless they ask me questions. So I just used to set these kind of rules, but there's no, there was no like class routine. What I found out like, by switching everything to, to online is that routines are a lifesaver because students go to class, in this case, uh, join the Google Meet and they already know what they're supposed to do. After a couple of weeks, it's smooth sailing. So that really helped. My routine, just for, um, just if you're interested for the basic communication course, I would meet the students for about five minutes, uh, the first five minutes of class in a like, global, <laughs> sort of um, global Google Meet and just, you know, um, talk to them, say hi, hi, just one by one. How are you doing? And then I would allocate 55 minutes for a community communicative task. In these community communicative tasks, uh, students are in pairs and they have a list of discussion questions that they can choose from. I usually write uh, between, uh, I, I pick a theme and write between 25 to 30 discussion questions for students to, to choose from, okay? So, uh, what the a big difference, you know, this is something that I used to do before, but the big difference here is that uh, I am no longer like physically in the room together with the students. So my, my fear was like, or how do I make sure that the students are on, on track? How, how can I make sure that they're doing this in English? How do I um, make each other like accountable? So, um, I, I had to learn to trust my students much more than I used to. And I'm glad that I did because they didn't disappoint. I have to say, maybe it was because of the pandemic. Maybe I got lucky. I think these are motivated kids no matter what. So um, I didn't have too many problems, but it was difficult for me in the beginning to not be there physically with the students and listening to them at all times because I can only visit one or with my setup, two breakout rooms at the same time. So um, I had to build in some, some trust, uh, which is probably my biggest learning achievement. I mean, what I have learned from online classes that I can trust my students if I give good enough instructions because I don't always do that. And then in the remaining 30 minutes or so, I would give, um, students three, usually three things to do, and they can choose how to allocate time, how to manage their time. One would be one extra task that could be a communicative task. It could be to I don't know, watch a video and respond to the video with, a, with an audio. It could be, a, could be grammar, could be uh, not usually listening exercise because we have a separate listening class, but sometimes it could be a listening task. And then very, very important, a reflection task in which they tell me and they, they, which they share with me what they learned for today, what they've uh, been doing, if everything was okay in the breakout room, if, they, if the partner was cooperating and everything. So this is also my way to uh, understand more for, uh, about what was going on in the, in the breakout rooms and homework, which is usually, again, students uh, taking following a prompt and taking audio or video uh, to, to respond to this prompt. Um, 
very quickly with the, um, the other course, the uh, advanced English communication course. Now this was set up to be online and having learned that I can trust my students to do the work, I, I created a debate based course where students don't always need me to be there to you know, actually teach, but I can trust them after, after some training to, to become able to do some research. And of course I will do some training on how, how to conduct debate. But I have to say very, very quickly, it was a huge success. Of course, students say, oh, it would be better to do this in person. I totally agree, but uh, it worked. It worked and I didn't feel that I wasn't able to do the same, to conduct the same kind of communication that I would have online. And the public speaking course, well, that was, that was tough because I didn't consider, I didn't think that some of the activities that I used to do in, in class, like physically face-to-face, -face, just don't work online. Especially in a, in a course like public speaking where there's a lot of interaction or where like from time to time, I would, where we practice impromptu speeches, I would ask a student to give an impromptu speech. It takes forever to set up in, um, in Google Meet and it just doesn't work because you lose the surprise factor. Um, okay, I don't want to speak for too long. I've already spoken for 15 minutes. So if there's any question, uh, I can take it and maybe we can start a discussion. I'm mainly here to learn from, from everyone, but this is what I did in the, in the last year. And I hope it helps somehow. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, do any of the presenters want to, you know, uh, add to what he, what he said? Or anything like that? Um, not really, but I can I can fully uh, concur to uh, the situation you're in. Um, definitely, um, teaching online, you you have to recognise that there are things that work better than others. And as regards routine, I did change it after a while, but I know that especially with the first two students, you needed to get them to feel comfortable in their environment. So I kept it very simple. I changed how I evaluated them to make it a lot more less threatening and make it more encouraging. So I think that was one thing I found, especially at the beginning, was trying to make sure that they felt inclusive, that I could differentiate the lesson to a level that everyone felt that they could be involved. And that took a lot of thinking and a lot of common sense. So I think that was a key thing I found, especially at the beginning, but I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, and I spent a lot of planning because I want, like these kids, they don't know each other. They're, they're first year students, right? So usually like in class, by the third week, they're all friends, so they have the little group of friends. Here literally, since they only work in pairs, at least in my class, and I do plan the pairs so they, they get to talk to all of the other students, but it gets, it takes, almost one semester, one full semester for them to talk to all of the students, all of the other students. It was interesting so you said that I had, to, I had to teach students how to socialize outside the classroom because they didn't know each other's contact details. And I felt very, very uncomfortable yeah. going, hello, can you be my friend? <laughs> so yeah, and in the first semester, I set up a line group. And then by reading online, I realized that maybe that was not the best thing to do for you know, a series of um, issues that I see in the questions are starting to come up. So I ditched that and yeah, communication wasn't the best with Google Classroom, especially with the latest updates uh, was a big help. I see a couple of questions here on uh, keeping cameras on. Yes, and I was wondering if you could, add, if you could answer those. Uh, directly yes. and not live very, because you went over quickly. a little bit a little too long so we still have the other presenters so, so I don't I don't feel that I can require students to um, to turn on the camera also I cannot physically go to their room and turn on the camera for them so um, of, of course I will strongly encourage students to turn the camera on my camera is always on at all times so I, I try to model this 
And what, something that, that I noticed is that students were told in other uh, uh, classes they take in Japanese to have their camera off at all times. So I had to retrain them to know that it, to you know let them know that it's okay to have your camera on, especially during field work. So what I noticed, the pattern that I started noticing, um, is that in the first five minutes. Excuse sorry? me, can yeah. I interrupt you? I'm sorry. So yeah. I, I would actually like you to answer those questions directly into the okay. the document because yeah, yeah, no you, you went over your 15 minutes and we only have like a total of 15 minutes at most 20 for questions and everything. Yeah. So, so sorry. No problem. I'll do that. You Thank off. you. Um, everything, no problem. Yeah, I, I love all of your experiments and how you changed everything from class to class. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have time for you to answer any, uh, all of the questions live because you actually got quite a few questions. <laughs> so, which is awesome. Okay. So good yeah, I'll be, I'll be on the Google Doc. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, no problem. <laughs> so next, we will have um, uh, Ravensi, please. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> Hello, uh, everyone. This is... Uh, Revdi from uh, India. Uh, the scenario that we have here is we always uh, teach uh, language skills in as a lab course, and uh, it has always been a blended uh, learning uh, situation. And uh, the idea of uh, saying this is that uh, when it uh, when the pandemic started, when the student ha students had to uh, know had to have the transition from face to face to online. It was not that difficult, I would say, uh, in the Indian context, because uh, particularly in, in our university where I was teaching, I, we were handling classes in the lab. So most of the uh, classes were uh, handled in um, uh, digital platforms and uh, we were using a lot of digital tools. So um, I will just uh, screen share. Um, So, um, so the tools that the uh, students were actually using uh, in my classroom were uh, Prezi, uh, they were using VoiceThread and uh, when I after my retirement, when uh, when I trained my teachers and the teachers had actually attempted using this Flipgrid in their classroom, um, after I showed them as to how they have to use this particular uh, tool, um, I found that that students actually uh, at the tertiary level were quite comfortable using these uh, tools. Uh, I would say. Uh, uh, the reason is they, these tools were used more for them to record their uh, uh, conversations, record their discussions, their comments or whatever, and then uh, submit or share it with uh, the teachers. Um, again, the reason is that we had, uh, we normally have large classrooms and uh, making the students do the talking in that online classroom is quite difficult um, because uh, it takes a lot of time for the teacher to assess the students. So students normally use uh, various tools for um, recording their presentations, their discussions, and then submitting. So this is what they were actually, uh, they have been doing. They used uh, Prezi for uh, preparing their planned presentations. And uh, as you know that this particular tool helps uh, the user to uh, use uh, various templates and they can add content and the students found it very convenient for them to use the templates because it is available for free and they were able to add contents they were able to practice their uh, uh, presentations and once they were comfortable with the presentation they shared the link with the teachers and uh, with regard to the voice thread again uh, whenever the, uh, we uh, shared uh, media and we asked uh, either an image or a video or whatever, and then we asked the students to comment on, they were able to do that uh, because as you know, that voice thread is, could be accessed as a, a mobile application as well. So they were able to um, use this tool very effectively. And uh, when it came to the Flipgrid, I found, or I should say my teachers found uh, that they were uh, able to 
share the videos uh, with the students and ask them to collaborate, uh, present their uh, recording and then uh, have the discussion online. And uh, one of the teachers who had attempted in her class, uh, she said that she could uh, actually a science teacher who used that uh, particular tool in her classroom in an online uh, uh, training, uh, she was able to um, share the video on uh, gene editing a science teacher who could share a video on gene editing and she could make her uh, students uh, do the discussion, share their views uh, by recording their voices, recording their video and shared with her. So I found uh, these tools actually, I, I always feel that uh, tertiary level students, particularly uh, the engineering students whom I have taught, they are quite uh, tech savvy and uh, they are able to um, use the tools very effectively. They are very comfortable in using the tools than uh, do the talking. And uh, not only that, as we all know that when we use these tools, uh, they can actually, um, uh, because it helps them to be self-paced um, and because it helps them, it motivates them to do the talking, they, they normally practice even beyond the classroom. Uh, so it need not be done only within the classroom scenario. So even beyond, they are able to use these tools very effectively. And uh, this is something uh, which I have always found uh, uh, my students you know, participating very effectively uh, in interactions. And uh, as, as teachers, uh, we have found that we were able to evaluate our students' uh, presentations or uh, their discussions, and we were able to give feedback to the students uh, very effectively. Um, and uh, this is what I have found uh, in using the digital tools. And uh, this is what I would advocate uh, you know, for teachers to follow. Maybe uh, most of you must be using these tools already. But then uh, I found that this is a very important. Uh, the important point that I want to stress here is that it's they can be used for as uh, for formative assessments. And uh, they could be used for uh, the students to practice uh, speaking very effectively, uh, even beyond a classroom scenario. If you have questions, uh, you can ask me. Okay, thank you so much. Do any of our pr pr um, additional presenters want to add to anything that she shared or does anybody in the chat? Um, want to ask any questions? You do have one question in the okay. shared file. It says, um, okay. how do you give feedback to the students? I, I, I know you touched on this a little bit already. Yeah. So uh, when we use, again, say whatever tools I have used is something which uh, uh, they have used in addition to the platforms that the teachers have used like all of us have used. Say in a Google Classroom, uh, we are able to give the feedback either in the audio form or we can actually share uh, as a text. Um, I have attempted using even Edmodo with the students. I have used uh, Moodle with the students. And naturally we can give our feedback uh, relating to say when, uh, when they submit uh, in a Moodle platform, we can always give our comments there. And the students have the access to those comments and they will, if they have to resubmit an assignment, for example, they are able to do that because uh, they are able to work uh, with the tool. They are able to work with their uh, that particular skill uh, at their own pace. So that is possible. And uh, this is how I, I have attempted giving feedback. In Edmodo as well, you have the comment box there. Uh, whenever uh, people share their audio or video files, you have a comment option and you can always uh, give it to the students. And I, when I was teaching face to face, I used to put them in groups in Edmodo and I used to give them uh, separate uh, activities, speaking activities for them to have, whether it is a discussion on a case study or whatever, because I'm talking about engineering students. They have had a case study discussions online mm -hmm. as a group, as small groups. So I was able to give the, my comments uh, now and then. So in an online scenario, it is uh, totally different, but still uh, with these Moodle and the Google Classroom and Edmodo, we can still go ahead. Wonderful. And Jason, Jason Pipe, you had something to add? Oh, you're, you're muted. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Um, yes, thanks very much for uh, your explanation. Um, I was interested to um, uh, know whether you get students to give each other feedback as well. So, for example, with Flipgrid, I always get the students to give feedback and response videos as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they can. They have the capacity to do it. As I, uh, they have, there is a provision. I'm sorry. So, as I said in Edmodo, when you put them in groups, naturally they learn from each other. They do a lot of discussions. They comment on each other's posts, uh, uh, whatever that they have uh, recorded. That is possible. Uh, when it comes to uh, college students, you can imagine they go to the extent of recording and sharing their YouTube videos with the teacher, uh, and. And uh, of course, girl students would have their own reservations, but students have done that and they have recommended on that is that has uh, that they have done. Okay. Well, thank you so much. If anybody else, else has you. any questions, please direct them to the file or the shared file and then she can answer them directly there. Um, it is really fun to see what other people are doing in other parts of the world, right, and how we can learn from each other, because um, we're all teaching EFL, right, <laughs> and so uh, it's really awesome uh, that we get to hear what you're doing in India. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. It. Thank you, Rachel.